Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to, uh, you know, actually, you know, let's just skip the intro. You guys already know what it is. My hands are tired from, you know, keep on rubbing for 83 episodes. And, you know, I'm, I'm tired from saying, look at the clock behind me, it's 10.30. You guys know what it is. It's time for hashtag LNT, episode 83. Now, uh, you know, tonight, if, if you're wondering, uh, you know, what this says right here, you just got to read uh, E-I-D-G-H-A-D-I-R. Uh, I, I, had, I had to look to remember the word, but um, yes, we are celebrating tonight, uh, and uh, what a celebration it is. The guys actually, uh, you know, mashallah, put in effort and some time to decorate the studio, so shout out to Bashir Asadi uh, and, and all of them, who and uh, Mustafa Nadir, and uh, of course, Ali Maytham. It is the biggest day of the year, so I'd like to give a, a quick shout out uh, to everyone participating in tonight's episode from Hassan Asadi to Salmad al Husseini. Uh, to Hussein Hadi, uh, aka Sota V, uh, to uh, Ali Jasim, and of course I gotta give a shout out to myself uh, as well. Uh, Ali Maytham, I uh, already gave him a shout out, aka Alush Al Hazin. Uh, yes, <laughs> we are celebrating tonight, but let's go take a quick break, come back to talk about what's trending in a few seconds. Once again, once again, we welcome everyone who's joining us tonight. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, the studio looks fresh. I look fresh. The crew looks fresh. Everyone's having a good time tonight. Uh, and we're trying to kick it out, or kick it out, uh, with, uh, with what's trending. Now, um, if you're uh, infatuated with history and historical uh, antiquities, uh, dating back to special wars in history, then look no further. Um, if you're, you know, specifically in World War II, all you gotta do uh, is, is go to uh, Jersey, containing radio tower that was previously a former Second World War uh, fortress uh, and is now a vacation rental. Uh, full screen, it looks amazing. Uh, one of the best uh, views you can get. Uh, now this was built by the Nazis, Nazi forces and occupied Jersey during uh, the Second World War. Uh, those who actually go there uh, get to see a 360 view uh, of, uh, of both the land and the water together. So it's, uh, it's an amazing view. If you're thinking of a honeymoon, why not go for an antique from uh, World War II? You know, your marriage can, you know, it can become very healthy after that. I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, really, if you guys need a job, I mean, try to go and, you know, uh, apply to become a pilot. Why? Because the Asian Pacific will now need the greatest number of pilots, technicians, and cabin crew um, for, the o for over the, the next two decades. How much do they need exactly? They need 240,000 pilots, you know, because their economic uh, growth, uh, it's, it's so high, and it's, you know, skyrocketing. Uh, by 2027, by 2037, they're going to need 240 pilots, 317,000 cabin crew. That's a huge number, huge number. Um, but if you guys don't know how to fly, uh, you know, just, just buy a kite, fly it. You know, in Arab, you probably find that during Ramadan especially. Fly it, and then you know how to fly an airplane. I'm just kidding. Um, let's just uh, jump into tonight's topic really quickly. Once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. If you're wondering, uh, why the lights, uh, why everything is, is looking so fresh, why I look so fresh. Uh, give me a, a close-up of myself on Eid al-Ghadir. I mean, come on, guys. Tonight is, uh, is, 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 is something amazing. Although we do, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, um, as everyone knows, there are many wonderful and joyous celebrations around the world. You know, some cultures and religions commemorate each or a specific day and mark it as a day of celebration, giving uh, gifts, uh, celebrating in it, having family over, going to family, visiting uh, parents, buying some sweets, looking fresh, um, you know, have some nice decorations, so on and so forth. Now, for examples, Christians, they have Christmas, and the Christmas sales are amazing, subhanAllah. But for Christmas, 
I just, you know, I, I don't, do, do I really have to say what Christmas is? It's the birth of Jesus Christ. But if we move on to Judaism, uh, the Jewish have Hanukkah, uh, festival of the lights, where they celebrate uh, the redundant of the um, uh, dedication of uh, the second uh, temple um, uh, later on in Jerusalem. Uh, but if we were to come to last but not least, Islam. Now for all those watching us and everyone out there, um, we know that within Islam there, there, there are several Eids. The first is being Eid al-Fatr. Eid al-Fatr means that say, you know, Ramadan is done, alhamdulillah, fasting is done. Although, you know, for the pious, like individuals like myself, um, we always fast. So, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, just it keeps us uh, on the path. And then after comes Eid al-Adha, which we just had, a, a, you know, a week ago. Um, a whole episode about it, about a week ago. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, it's the festival of sacrifice. But there's one specific Eid that really hasn't gotten um, much has gotten a lot of media attention, but not to the extent where everybody knows about it as much as the other do. Although it's more important, but we're trying to find out tonight what that aid is. So tonight, with all the decorations around me, and me looking fresh and the crew uh, being 100%, um, we're trying to ask the question to you guys. And the question is popping up in three, two, one. Why is Eid al-Ghadir the greatest Eid. That's a very simple question. Why is Eid al-Ghadir the greatest Eid? Very simple and informative. The number you call us is plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six, and let us know what you guys think via that question right there uh, that we just showed you. Uh, you can call us uh, via uh, a WhatsApp uh, message, uh, phone call, and uh, you can shoot us a voice message regarding tonight's uh, topic. Very simple. Why is Eid al-Ghadir the greatest Eid? Let's take a quick break. Come back to you guys very short. Now, we do remind everyone uh, of the question, what we're talking about tonight. We're talking about Eid al-Ghadir, the best celebration out there. The celebration where Shia's just go wild. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, Shia celebrate, they try to have fun, uh, you know, and, and everyone, everything's good. Now, for those who are, you know, asking the questions, what? There's another Eid? There's Eid al-Ghadir? Yeah, bruh. Another one. We have another Eid called Eid al-Ghadir. Now, so what exactly is Eid al-Ghadir? Why do Shia Muslims celebrate it? Now, it's a very, very important question to discuss tonight. Although it has been discussed by many, but it's good to open up the discussion for tonight as we're about to dive deep into what Eid al-Ghadir represents. Now today around the world, <laughs> Shias, aka Ahmed Ali, they're celebrating, and hashtag NT, are celebrating Eid al-Ghadir. And there are various facts and various uh, narrations regarding uh, this very, very important Eid. Now, it's where the Shias get to celebrate the day uh, where the cousin of Rasulullah, not only that, but his son-in-law, um, where he becomes his successor, the Prophet's successor. An amazing day where over 100,000 individuals present on one day, on one occasion, in one place, and the Prophet is addressing them. Now, where, when and where did this happen? Now, as you know, today is 18th of the Hajjah, or night of the 18th of the Hajjah. Ten years after Hijrah, after the Prophet's migration to Medina, the Prophet goes to Hajj. After his return from Hajj, there's one specific area where everyone, every you know, every tribe that comes or whoever comes uh, to celebrate, or sorry, whoever goes to Hajj, on their way back to their home, they have to pass through this area called Khum. There's a small pond in that area. It's, 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 it's like uh, with hills and stuff. If you, if you check out uh, the picture and, and on the map, you can, you can probably see. Uh, but in that area, it's hills. There's a pond um, called Ghadir, where Prophet stood and gave um, the sermon of Ghadir Khum. 
um, modern day uh, Juhfa in Saudi Arabia. Now this area right there, Ghadir Khum. Now this area specifically, um, as I mentioned, is the area where all where all the the, 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 the tribes wherever went to Hajj. On the way back, they passed through here. So it's it's like a transit for them. They pass through there, greet each other, and then everyone goes to their own separate ways. However, Prophet Muhammad chose this area for this significant because it's significant. Everyone is just gathered there. Over a hundred thousand individuals on that specific day. And trust me when I say, hundred thousand isn't something small. It's huge. Now on the 18th of the Hajjah, 10th, 10th year after Hijrah, the Prophet stops in that area and stops everyone. Whoever's in the front stops in the back, whoever's in the back stops in the front. Everyone just stops and listens to what the Prophet is about to say. And you know, let, let's just keep in mind, this, this, this is the first and last Hajj of Prophet Muhammad. His official Hajj, first and last Hajj uh, to Mecca. So everyone stops in this area called Khum, Ghadir Khum. Now, as soon as they stop, or the reason why they stop, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jubra'il to Prophet Muhammad and he says this exact verse in Al Ma'idah verse 67. He says, O Apostle, deliver what has, what has been sent to you from your Lord, and if you did not, then you have not delivered his message. And Allah will protect you from the people. I mean, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, if you guys have that information, Prophet Muhammad, 23 years spent preaching Islam, preaching the proper message, showing everyone what Islam is really is, you know, your good manners, don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, don't do this and this, be a pious individual, be a good individual. 23 years of hardship, his companions going through almost hell because of what Quraysh did to them. The Prophet going through miseries 23 years just to preach Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes on this day and tells Prophet Muhammad, doesn't come, but sends Ibrahim, tells Prophet Muhammad, O oh, Apostle of God, deliver or convey what has been sent down to you from your Lord. And if you do not convey it, then it's like you haven't done anything. These 23 years are meaningless if you don't if you don't uh, convey this specific message. Prophet Muhammad was, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, a lot of people, um, when, they, when they analyze this, you can probably find this uh, in lectures or on, on articles online. They have tried to use the word threaten. God threatens Prophet Muhammad. Absolutely not. But it's in a way where an individual, you know, for example, if you're trying to build a house, and one specific area where the house is, is, is built on is not set right, then that whole house is, is, is broken apart. Yes, Prophet Muhammad, 23 years of hardships, 23 years of misery, and, and trying to bring everyone together to 100,000 on Ghadir Khum. The Prophet is trying to tell everyone that at the peak of Islam, at that time, at that era, he wants to let everyone know of what happened or what is going to happen on this specific day and why it's so special. So realize how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this announcement, this specific message that he has, the last message that he has to convey to everyone. Now, the sermon of Prophet Muhammad, as everyone knows, on this day is pretty long, it's pretty lengthy. But I don't want to keep on reading the whole thing and letting you guys, uh, you, you guys can probably go um, read that in various books. But tonight, I want to focus on the part where it's most important, where Prophet Muhammad announces this message. What is that message? He says, O oh Allah, bear witness. O oh people, Allah is my Lord, and I am His guardian uh, upon you, and the guardian of the believers. I am worthy of the believers than themselves, of, who am, of whom's ever then he raised the hand of Ayn Talib and he says, whoever, I was their mawla, I was their guardian, I was their leader, then Ali is the exact same. In that specific picture right there, raises his hand, he says, oh people, whoever I was the leader of, whoever I was the mawla, the guardian, 
of then Ali is the exact same. Then Ali is his master, is his mawla. Oh Allah, be the supporter of those who support him, aka Ali, and an enemy of those who oppose him, aka Ali ibn Abi Talib. So it's important to keep that in mind when we're talking about this. Now all the schools of thought, you know, if, if, if you were to, to analyze what actually happened on that day and who was present on that day, the great historians, great Islamic historians were present at, at that time. Those who have narrated the books are present on that time. Historians present on that time. And as some say, historians, approximately over 300 historians were present on that day. So 300 times that narration is mentioned. Over than 300 times that narration is mentioned. Now according to um, fiqh jurisprudence, according to um, the scale as to how you should rate a narration, mutawatir is something that, every, that everyone's agreed on. Everyone has agreed on that, with it's, it's, they call it the mutawatir. Something that a lot of people have mentioned and a lot of people have agreed upon. Ghadir khum, the sermon, the event, everything about it is agreed on. However, the split comes when we're trying to t in interpret the word wali, you know, see, hence we get Ali and Wali Allah, Wali, Ali, Wali Allah in the Adhan. A lot of people try to use the fact that, you know what, Wali simply means a spiritual leader, a friend of Prophet Muhammad, blood related to Prophet Muhammad. Not really focusing on the fact that Wali, if you were to go actually interpret it, Within Arabic, within Arabic, you'll find it meaning a successor. And plus, when Prophet Muhammad wants to say, whoever I was his mawla, what, mawla means blood related? So 100,000 people, the Prophet wasn't related to 100,000 people. He wasn't, the, well, he was the friend, but he wasn't related to 100,000 people. So whoever I was their wali, then Ali is their wali. Oh, subhanAllah, so whoever the Prophet is related to, then Ali is related that, that's common sense. When someone actually tries to come and, and give this kind of um, proof and give this kind of evidence to such an argument, then uh, they have to rethink of, a, uh, rethink of what to say and how to say it. Now, this is where the split happens. A lot of people say that, you know what, Ali Talib is a spiritual leader. And Shias believe, the Twelvers, the Ithna Asharis, the Ja'faris, they believe that no, Wali, means that he is the successor, he is the leader, and he is the one that comes after Prophet Muhammad righteously. Some things did happen, and history won't be kind, but yes, things happened and Ali wasn't the successor, was robbed. We don't want to get into that, today is we're trying to celebrate. So what we're trying to say is that the word wali is what split um, the two uh, being as a Sunni narration and as a Shia narration. Now Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam says, O oh Allah, be the supporter, who, uh, be, be the supporter whoever supports Ali and the enemy whoever opposes Ali. This is where they, um, they get their conclusion from that the Prophet is saying, yes, support Ali. And you know, they say we do support him, but he's not our wali. It's way deeper than that. And as we mentioned earlier on, then if we were to go and uh, continue the discussion, but up to now, everything should be clear of why Eid al-Ghadir is the greatest Eid. You know, yes, sometimes we do think about it, you know, Eid al-Fitr, uh, Eid al-Fitr is a great Eid. You know, it, it finishes a month of, of, of uh, fasting. A month of obedience, a, 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 a month of discipline, self-discipline. A month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that within that month there's Laylatul Qadr which is greater than a thousand months. And within that the Quran was revealed. So at the end of that month, Eid comes. Shouldn't, it be? Shouldn't that be the greatest Eid? Let's hold that thought for a second. The second Eid we have we have Eid al-Adha, sacrifice, Prophet Abraham, 
and his try, him trying to sacrifice his son for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then that ritual just passed down to Islam and how everyone now sacrifices on that day they call the Eid al-Adha is it not the greatest Eid where an individual sacrifices to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to Hajj one of the most you know important things within Islam one of the pillars of Islam is Hajj you go to Hajj yes these two are great Eid al-Fitr is great Ramadan is great but let's focus on the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in Al-Ma'idah verses 67. He says, O Prophet, yes, hajj, prayer, khums, zakah, fasting, whatever, sacrificing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Eid al-Adha. All of those that he's done within these 23 years, all the battles, the Eids that he had to go through, Eid al-Fatr and Eid al-Adha, yes, they're great. But if you don't convey the specific message on that day, then everything is, is worthless. Then it's like you haven't even conveyed the message of Islam. And what was that message? Making clear to everyone that was accompanying him on, the, on, the, on his last Hajj, making it clear to everyone that, you know what? On this specific day is the day where I announce publicly to everyone that Ali is my successor. Narrations do mention that, you know what, before Prophet Muhammad did mention why is it so great. Prophet Muhammad, when he was in Medina, yes, he mentioned to his companions, to everyone, that every time Ali sat, Prophet Muhammad would stand up, greet him, and say, this is my successor. Even if we were to go a bit further back, to those who do use that argument, even if you go just a few years back, in al mabath al when the Prophet first began his mission, he asked everyone, everyone had the chance to be the successor of Prophet Muhammad, when he says, who is brave enough to be my wali, to be my successor, to be my close one, that wherever I go, he goes. No one stood up. People thought he was crazy. Ali ibn Talib stood up the first time. He, Prophet Muhammad said, sit. he's 13 or 12. Then Prophet repeated it, he stood up. Repeated again, stood up. And then at the end, he said, this is my successor. So yes, Prophet Muhammad did mention it way before Ghadir. When he first started Islam, he mentioned that this is going to be, he is going to be my successor, Ali Talib. So why is Ghadir so great? Ghadir is so great because at the time, Muslims were, 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 were a minority. At that time, Muslims were in the tens. You know, after the migration, they became in the hundreds when, when, when they entered Medina. But now, they're in thousands. Some narrations say 70. Some narrations say 100,000 people were present on that day. So imagine the, the importance of such a place and such, in, such an event where Prophet Muhammad, you know, utilizes that time and that place to deliver this, this sermon. Now it's pretty clear that Eid al-Ghadir is one of the greatest Eids because the, the, the axis of Islam really lies on there and that's where Islam balances out. It balances out on Ghadir. Now if we were just to go and look at some hadiths, try to clear uh, the water up. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessings be upon him and his progeny, has said the day of Ghadir is the best Eid for my nation. It's the day on which God the Almighty ordered me to preach the appointment of my brother, Ali Nabi Talib, as the flag and principle of my nation. So people shall be guided by him after me. And this is the day in which God has completed the religion and perfected the bounties on my nation and the day on which he was pleased with Islam as their religion. This is actually another verse. This is, this is another verse within the Quran and a tradition as well. So if we were just to keep that in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad that today he has perfected the religion of Islam. So let's just comprehend that. On that day, Islam was perfected. And Allah chose that religion for the over 100,000 of people who were present on that day. So 
imagine the greatness of this day and the importance it holds. Now another narration by Imam Sadiq, peace and blessings be upon him, he says, it is the greatest festival of Allah. Allah has not sent any prophet, but that he celebrated this day as Eid and was aware of its sanctity. It is known in the heavens as the day of the famous covenant. You might think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty and the Majestic has created a day more sacred than that. No, by Allah, no, by Allah, no, by Allah. It's clear that Mama Sadiq and both Prophet Muhammad, they're telling us that Allah has not created a better day than Ghadir because Islam was perfected and Prophet Muhammad and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Islam to be the religion. This, uh, this hadith can, can be found in Tadheeb al-Ahkam uh, by Shaykh Atusi, volume 3, verse 143. Just be knowledgeable like Mu'a. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. But therefore, as we Muslims, we should never forget the words of Prophet Muhammad. You know, yes, we go on our daily lives. We do whatever we try to have fun. Yes, have fun but within Islamic boundaries. But you know, try, try to, to, to always remember these words. And it's important to keep in mind to always tune into hashtag LNT because we have the freshest episodes with the freshest people. That's it for tonight. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.